question. Um, I've been asked to explain a little bit about the Civil Air Patrol and where, where it came from and, and where it is today. I uh, started off uh, actually seven days before Pearl Harbor. Started off on December 1st, 1941. And what it was is uh, um, uh, a bunch of civilians flying their own airplanes. Uh, just got a little more organized. And uh, were formed uh, by Congress. And uh, seven days later, six days later actually, uh, Pearl Harbor happened. So throughout the war, uh, they patrolled with their own aircraft. Uh, the Gulf Coast and the Atlantic Coast and uh, several sightings, I don't have all the statistics, but several sightings, uh, they actually attacked, uh, and I still haven't figured out how because they were flying light airplanes, not no military aircraft, and they actually uh, were credited with destroying two U-boats during the Second World War. That means a lot to me because you're pledging for to do what CAP needs you to do and volunteer service, integrity, and leadership. That's basically the three things you have to do. And you got to participate in unit activities, wear your uniform, wear it right, don't fool around. And when you're uniformed, that's the main part of it. I'm here what is a lot. I love search and rescue, but for the kids. Um, the cadets are just incredible young people, some of which who need some help. I've seen an incredible amount of growth in the students where they may have been a behavioral problem or they may have been academically struggling, and this program has literally turned their lives around. The parents come up to me, the parents come up to the school, and will tell us how an incredible change has occurred in their son or daughter. And that's what this program is about. It's not just me. Our entire senior staff that we have is just absolutely incredible. It's not just we're here for ourselves or we're here to do the search and rescue. We're here for the kids. We do what we need to do and we try to help them as much as we possibly can. And it's just incredibly gratifying to see when they start, when the light bulb goes on and when they start to really take over and become who they are going to be. It changed my life. It changed my life. It changed our lives. Cap changed my life because it kind of made me more like a, you can say more like, uh, like it makes me think more about discipline, but like I used to goof around a lot in uh, school, but like I can say now that it's made me change just a little bit more, like makes me think more about doing my work, but I admit I might like, miss doing my work, but it makes me do it more than I used to last year when I just want to do it at all. Okay, so, um, CV Part 2 changed my life, um, like, in, in so many ways. Like, um, before, I used to be quiet and stuff, but I got open to the paper. I made new papers and stuff, so, yeah. Um, also, CV Part 2 changed my life because before, I don't really take rest on the responsibility for my stuff and stuff uh, and other stuff, but now I know what to do and I take respons responsibility. Be a pretty bad student, let's say, and you know, Cap actually kind of changed that, and I ended up going, becoming a good kid after that. Cap changed my life because, like, before. When, when I first joined, it kind of seemed a little bit lonely because I only had a couple friends in there, but now I basically know everybody in there. It's pretty fun. Cap changed my life because I got to 
that has changed my life because I have more respect for my country and the people who serve my country. I also have more respect for my elders. I know how, I now know that they do a lot for me. Um, and I set myself to a higher standard. Anyways, because in sixth grade I never did nothing. In seventh grade, there was a point like I was not going to do anything at all. And once I joined CAPS, that changed, and I started getting good grades, except for now. Before I joined CAP, I used to be more like a like a goof around person, and like falsely not do my work. And I didn't, it was kind of fun at first, but then I kind of realized I got in trouble after I got in CAP, which makes me do my work. But I might like still goof around, but not as much. But it like makes me more like worthy and like disciplined so I know what I have to do. So um, I'm basically from Nigeria but um, this was my, um, I've been here for up to a year. I, I, was, I, I was actually born here but I, have, I was raised in Nigeria. So um, when I came it took me, um, I, um, the school kind of was kind of rough for me because I wasn't used to the way people do stuff here. So um, then one of my teachers told me that um, I should do it, told my mom that Civil, Civil Patrol will be a good thing for me. Uh, I joined CAT because I wanted to be in the Air Force when I get older and, and longer in the Air Force until I retire. Yeah, because I liked how the ranks were. Like, I really wanted to be a chief because that, that was awesome. And that's why I joined CAT. So um, Captain Zara, that uh, really, really helped me a lot. Because um, when I joined Super Patrol, I didn't really know we could be we could be doing all this school stuff. And, and so yeah, I was in this way. He helped me. He is he helped me with the test. Um, sometimes when I have a homework that I don't really understand, he helped me with it. But if he can, he can call the teacher or some of the students to help me. Um, he has a big impact on my life he, um, because um. He basically is like a provider to me. And yeah. I don't like setting the parking brake in the winter. Sometimes parking brakes freeze up. Control wheel lock, I've already removed that. that. That keeps all the controls from moving when the, when the plane is stacked. Avionics power switch, I've already checked that. We'll put that on. Ignition, master, I, I did all the fuel quantity indicators. There's fuel, ga fuel gauges in the airplane. We're not supposed to rely on them because they're kind of general ideas. We're going to check the fuel on that. November 15, that was the day I flew my first plane. Um, that I was kind of nervous at first, but um, the, um, our commander told me um, not to be worried that nothing is going to be wrong. And um, so, um, so we were in the air um, because so there was someone next to me. He was he was like the main pilot, but there were like two there were two wheels. So you have one, the person there is the two person in front. So. Uh, when the commander um, tells, um, says it's your, it's your turn to fly, then you, you, um, you, grab, you grab the wheels then. Pretty awesome. I got to fly with Captain Larson first, and it was awesome being up there for about two hours' time and taking control of the, taking control of the plane for a whole entire hour. When we started the squadron here at Heritage Middle School, um, two cadets from the other squadron actually came with us to help start it. Um, one of them became the cadet commander, Mike Frigo, and now he is currently in the Air Force. The other one went on to college. And um, so we started with two cadets and we now currently have 45 cadets.
so the big monster rockets, the capsule, all the astronauts, all the food that they took, launched it right up, you know, out of Cape Canaveral, went off. What they're going to do this time, though, because of the stuff for, the, uh, for Mars, the plan is they're going to launch the astronauts up. Then they are also going to turn around and launch like the Orion uh, rockets that went up. Other similar rockets to then basically meet up in space and then proceed from there. So it won't be a, you know, necessarily sitting in Florida, next stop is Mars. It will be, we're sitting in Florida, we will launch ourselves into orbit, and then from there, they will ship up some more stuff to us, we will get assembled, and then from already in low orbit of the, new, uh, of the Earth, then proceed onto Mars. Okay. Uh, also on that, I do believe that they're still thinking about it with this Orion project as going to Mars. Um, there's a system that they're using that they're going to, that might be used that will pre-launch the base that they stay on Mars, so those rockets have to go up first, establish, and then everybody else is coming up after. And, and yeah, that's it. So they're going to be doing it in two different spots. Um, and the reason being is, of course, it's a whole lot easier to launch it. Uh, your sister's not here. Get Morris. Okay. And then uh, Pettigrew. And then Watson. Okay. And that's just for them. Okay. Um, one. All right. And then Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yes, to join our program, a lot of it seems to be word of mouth, uh, a lot of it because we work in the school, they see the other cadets, but typically they have to go to three meetings. Their parents or parent has to go to at least one because we want them to know what our program is about, if it's the right fit for them. Um, after that, there's a $35 fee in Illinois that they pay for. If we have the uniforms, we'll supply them the uniforms. If we don't, then they'll have to purchase the uniforms. Um, they have to go through the core values of Civil Air Patrol. If they don't agree to the four core values, they cannot be in the program. Or if they abuse those core values, discipline will be uh, implemented and they may be removed from the program, which has happened a couple times. And we realize that the program is not for everybody, but you know, as long as they try it, that's what we're after because it might be for some. In CAP, we have four core values, excellence, respect, integrity, and volunteer service. In CAP, when we say respect, we mean like, respect your authorities, don't talk back, don't argue, always like be nice to them like you would want to be treated as well. For me, that means always follow orders like and directions, never talk back to my teachers, or never you argue with them. Second one would be integrity, which means always do what's right, even when nobody's looking, which means like if you wanna do something good or do something bad, don't do something bad, but think about something better because if you're gonna do something bad, it's not good for you. Which means like if you wanna steal something, you wanna think of integrity, do the right thing because you wouldn't want that happening to you then. The third one would be excellence, which means always try your hardest, never like, n never think that you're gonna fail. Even if you do think you are, always remember that you always try your best, which that's what makes excellence, which is me. Whenever I take tests, I have to think of excellence. And the last one is volunteer service, which means like helping your community out, like uh, like going cleaning up trash around, going to elderly home, which is kind of what one, I do. One, two, three, up. 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 One, two, three, do Oh, 
Basically what that means is that as a ki as a cadet wearing your uniform, you feel a sense of pride and self-respect for yourself and you tend to take care of yourself and others more tentatively. different from ordinary girls. As cadet, we practice integrity and we practice respect and we make sure that everything we do leads to the best of our ability. Some of my roles in this squadron, I'm the deputy commander of cadets, meaning I'm in charge of the cadets. I'm also the emergency services officer for this squadron and what we call a group, which is one level above squadron, level on one of the trainers. What we do in emergency services is we go out and we search for either downed aircraft, missing people, or if there's a natural disaster, we go. Cadets as young as 12 years old can actually go with us on these missions as long as they have the proper training and as always the parents have the final decision whether or not they'll participate. But if the cadet is on our mission, they are able to do the job that, under our direction to literally go out and find a downed aircraft or whatever the problem may be. Um, we will do that. We do a ton of community service. The emergency services, the cadets have opportunities to train minimally once a month every fourth Saturday of the month. But with me being also in the squadron, we get to train a little bit more than that. We have specialized equipment where we can actually go out and look for the black boxes or aircraft or certain clues um, of how to find missing persons and how to accomplish disaster relief. Um, it's an amazing kind of thing because you know kids are kids, but yet when they're thrown into a situation where we're actually searching, they they cease to be the kids and they become mini adults. And it's incredibly gratifying to work with them. Um, a previous cadet in my squadron, myself, a major, and, and his self, we were actually able to locate a uh, distress beacon when the Coast Guard could not find it. So that's including myself, a major, and at that time, a 16-year-old boy was able to accomplish that. I am a senior master sergeant. Uh, my duties as a senior master sergeant are, it could be different for anybody, depending on their rank. Um, me, I, um, I pretty much just command my flight, which means um, I, I, follow them, I follow them in, into their flights which means they have a specific order to form in so we could all uh, be counted for and start the day. Uh, my other duties are that I am the one of the drill officers. I am the highest rank of all the drill officers. Um, I pretty much drill the cadets to make sure they know their basic movements. And as they progress, their drill gets harder and challenging more challenging. Uh, today, uh, in Washington, we're represented with the Congressional Gold Medal. Um, big news for us, and, and actually in attendance were uh, a handful of uh, 
World War II pilots that, that actually flew for the Civil Air Patrol. Uh, one of them, I believe, is 101.